and this quarantine, this whole pandemic has showed me how much I love the game because it got taken away from me. And it made me go back to just playing for fun, man. Welcome back to this episode of the Ben's Lens 10-ish show where I'm joined with professional basketball player and Lake Worth native, which is exciting for me being from Lake Worth as well, Gene Tall Silla. Gene Tall, how are you doing today? I'm doing, man. How about yourself? Good. Doing great. Doing great. Happy to have you on and, you know, get to kind of talk about your basketball journey, uh, how you're handling quarantine, how you're handling everything, and, uh, you know, how we're going to be able to move our careers forward with everything that's going on. Sure. So, um as in tradition of the show, we're going to throw 10 minutes on the clock and get started and see where we fall within the timer. So um, you went to school at FAU, UMCW, and then you had your grad year at Arkansas. And that just finished up um, this past uh, spring. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. So obviously with all the sports, your season got cut short. There was no March Madness for you guys. And mm -hmm. we talked about it a little bit, March Madness being a huge thing for you and <clears throat> getting scouted and recruited uh, for the professional ranks. So what was that like not having March Madness and what position did that put you in? Um, you know, we played in the SEC tournament. We played uh, Vanderbilt in the SEC tournament, which is great, great event, great, you know, it, it, it's top part five conference. So, great media and you know the, SC, the conference tournament is where you get you know the feel of March Madness mm -hmm. so we we beat Vanderbilt in, in, in Tennessee for the SC tournament and I, we feel like our momentum just shifted we felt like we, we could have won the whole SC tournament they move on to March Madness so we beat Vanderbilt that night it was we had the last game that night and then the next morning you know we usually have the team meeting and film and breakfast so coach you know when we go in there the next morning in the hotel room, we see like the vibe is kind of off. All the coaches are quiet. And our head coach, Eric Musselman, his eyes are red and, you know, eyes is watery. And we're, you know, we, don't, we still don't know what's going on yet. You know, and he, while right we sat down, he, um, he talked, you know, he comes in the middle. He was like, you know, guys, you know, I'm sorry to tell you this, but we played our last game last night as a group. And, you know, when he said that, he was, you know, his voice was cracking up and he started tearing up, you know. And then it, it was me and two other seniors, we had to get up and speak. And it was very difficult because, you know, I've never played in an in, in a NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. I've come close, but this is my last year. This is the reason I, I, I left the NCW to go to the SEC to play in, in this NCAA tournament because I know my chances were going to be way, you know, much greater playing in the SEC. So, you know, I got up there and spoke to the team and it was telling them that I had their back no matter what. But it was it was tough and a very emotional moment for us because, you know, you work all summer, all preseason for March Madness. You know, it's not disregarding the, the season you play, but, you know, it's for March Madness. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's when all the TV games you play in every channel. And, you know, that's the, that's the whole point of college basketball in my eyes. Mm. And... For us, for me not to be able to do it ever when I had when I was this close to do it was very tough for us, man. Um, you know, we we all broke down, you know, that morning in the um meeting room, and we just we it was just something we least expected. You know, we heard about this virus thing, but they had already told us that we will continue playing games with no fans because mm -hmm. we heard about the Rudy Gobert thing. The, the the day of the, the day before that, so we were like, okay, no fans, which sucks, but hey, it's still it's you know it's still the tournament, but for them to you know just cancel it like that for us, man, was it was tough, man, especially as a senior, you know, you don't it, I, I, that was the toughest part for me because I wanted to leave without with a bang, you know, but it it was tough for us, and the next literally the next day, everyone flew home. We didn't even go back like. A lot of us didn't even go back to Arkansas. We was in Tennessee for the tournament. I got my book, my flight, went to Arkansas for a day, and came straight to Florida. And then haven't been back since. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's something sure. that, that I think about that's just so crazy to me. And I, I think about these athletes all the time because I was just a year before. I graduated in yeah. uh, 2019. And so I got to play my, you know, last spring season, everything like that. But I just think about that and, you know, my teammates and, you know, people in your position to – 
to just all of a sudden, you know, the, our baseball team had that same conversation of, hey, guys, look, the season's over, you know. Yeah, and, and, over, I just, man. A, and, and, you know, I have a, a close friend of mine plays at St. John's. And that same night, they were playing in a Big East tournament. And they told those guys they're in halftime. Mm. So they didn't even, you know what I mean? Think about that. Like, you yeah. know, like they came during the half and said, this game's over, season's over. They're in halftime. Oh, they stopped they it get, halftime? They, they stopped it through halftime. Wow. They only played one half of the wow. big, like, you know, so it, it, you know, it's definitely been different times, man. And it just makes you think, wow, like this sports stuff can really just, you know, just leave out of nowhere. We don't have to play sports, mm. like in life. Like, you know, like it's way more important things than that. That's really what it is. One of the lessons I've learned from that. For them to just cancel it like that, and you know, sports has been my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know which is crazy, man. But I, it still went over my head how they just canceled the season just like that, and then try to, you know, negotiate nothing. But I, I get it. You know, with all the safety stuff, but not giving us the year back. You know, not letting us finish our senior year, and not all we got was a pat in the back. You know, mm-hmm. and they just moved on. But hey, man, this. I, it is bigger than basketball, though, so I understand. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I get it, and it's it's such a tough position to be in, and, you know, you can have that understanding of and say, you know, you see the health concerns, you see it, but it doesn't take away that yeah. hurt not being able to finish. Sure. So I got to ask you, what was it like? How long did it take you to say, hey, look, this is my situation. Now I got to move on. It's on to the next step. It's on to, you know, working towards playing professionally at the next level. What was that kind of process like after you got the news? See, which was – now, the tough part was now when I got home to, you know, usually when you, you know, you, you play sports, when you, to get out of your head, you go play your sport, you go work out, you go swing, you go shoot, you know, you go do other things. Like, it's therapeutic for us. Now that we're home, we're stuck now. We're in quarantine. I can't go to no gym. I can't go outside. You know, so all I had to do was watch film and think about this past year. Like, it was hard for me to move on because I couldn't go work on my game, you know? And we're still trying to figure out, are they going to give us the year back? Are we going to finish the season? So it wasn't until probably, I want to say, May, I was like, okay. Like, once I, once I had my trainer, Mike, once he was able to, like, get a gym privately, mm. and once I started training and stuff like that, that's when I was like, you know what? That's behind me. I got to get ready for this pro level. Like, you know, so, but the first two months was hard because I couldn't train. No gyms was available. I couldn't find it. And um, so once I got with Mike, we started training and we just started just preparing for the next level. And then we, even with that process, they was thinking about canceling the pro level, but I didn't let that get in my head. I just, you got it's better to be, to be prepared than not prepared. So whether they had a season or not, I was still going to be prepared. So I think training really helped me, man. Just working out my game, just doing stuff what I couldn't do last year. Because my last year, I was playing, basically playing on one knee. You know, I was I was hurt. I was, you know, I couldn't play as much minutes. You know, I was hurt. So just getting back healthy and, you know, just thinking about the future, man, letting, you know, letting the past be the past and trying to move forward. We talked before this and you said that when the gyms were closed, you, you went to go play and train because that was the only thing open on outdoor courts. And yeah. it was funny because that was something that I didn't think about when you said that. I was like, oh, wow, that, that must be a big difference. What was yeah. that like playing on the outdoor courts? Yep. And what yep. kind of things did, did you take away? Or did it put anything in perspective for you getting to go back into indoor courts? What was that whole experience like? Like, you know, even the outdoor course was blah. They took the rims off in certain parks in my right. area. You know, so it wasn't like I just went straight to the outdoor parks. Uh, mm-hmm. It was like right, you know, right beginning in May, right before I started hanging out with Mike, I will just go outside, man, and just, but I will say this, though, when I was outside, it did bring me back about the, the playground years, you know, it, it, about that, that that mentality, and to be honest with you, I was just happy to just shoot in a goal, like, whether it was outside or inside, I was just happy to just go out there and be outside, and, you know, I brought one of my little nephews with me, he was rebounding for me and stuff like that, and, and it was hot. It's definitely different on my feet, on my legs and stuff like that. Like, I'd rather be indoors. But it, it was something to do. It was something to just go out there and, and bring me back to the good old days when we used to just play outside for fun and not just, 
you know, all serious training. And, you know, when I went outside, I just went out there and just played, man. And it, it was it was good for me, especially to get my mind off everything going on in the world. Now, is that kind of mentality something that you, you're trying to carry on throughout your training now to keep that in the back of your head, at least saying, hey, look, you know, it doesn't have to be all training or how have you kind of gone about it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, when you're in college, man, it's everything so programmed, like, Hmm. You have to do this and that, like the the right way. That's your role, and everything is systematic. Hmm. You know, now that I've had, so it's the most freedom I've had since high school. Hmm. It's even before that, you know. So now it's just this quarantine really gave me like it made me realize how much I love the game. And I remember the first open gym we had five on five back in uh, June when. Man, I was just so happy to just play, you know? Like, I was just jumping around. I wasn't even in shape, but I was just happy to just play, you know, instead of just, you know, when you do five on five in practice, it's a different type of pick pickup. It's more systematic. And this quarantine, this whole pandemic has showed me how much I love the game because it got taken away from me. And it made me go back to just playing for fun, man. Just, just enjoying the workout, enjoying the journey. You know, enjoying the hard work of it, the sprints, just enjoying it more than it just being a necessity. You know what I mean? So it, it definitely made me have that joy again, doing it for fun and doing it like we used to do in the playground. Yeah, I think that's awesome and, and something really important. And I know I was talking with, um, you know, a couple of my, my teammates last week who are in, uh, playing yeah. football now. And yep. They were playing in the, the season that they had because their, their season obviously got canceled. Um, they were able to work on some things that they wouldn't necessarily ordinarily work on. Yep, you know, yep, it's exactly. very similar uh, to your situation. So have you felt like that, like specific to the game, have you, have you seen an opportunity in this time outside of connecting with that fun where you're saying, hey, during a normal season or normal training, mm -hmm. I, wouldn't be, or I wouldn't be able to work on these things, but now because of everything, I have that opportunity? Well, you're supposed to stretch all the time, but <laughs> believe it or not, like I've stretched more than, more than ever during this huh. time. And and um, I I just became I, I became more healthy. Like mm -hmm. my knee hasn't had any more pr like less pressure on it of running all the time, uh, doing squats. So first and foremost, I've been healthy. I've been more flexible, you know, working out, doing yoga, a lot of yoga, a lot of stretching. So that stuff like, you know, it's more kind of off the court for my body that I've been more, you know, having more emphasis on is taking care of my body ice, you know, just more stretching, you know, hot yoga, yoga, just doing stuff like that to get me ready in the court. And for off on the court wise, you know, just, just, you know, basketball, it's all about feel, change of pace. Um, not just going in the gym and just shooting a whole bunch of shots like I usually do when I was, when I was in college, just in a shooting gun, just, I really, when I got back on the court, I really just try to work on my pace you know, pro, like pro level stuff, mm -hmm. like, you know, being patient off pick and rolls, um, you know, just thinking more of the mental side of the game. Cause you know, when you get to the pro level, everybody's athletic, everybody could do certain things really well, but it's the mental side that's going to get you over the hump. So just, you know, which, which is hard to really work on, but just I'm, when I work out now, I put myself more in game situations. Um, you know, I think more instead of just going, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I emphasize, okay, today I'm going to work on my low post moves. Today, the next, tomorrow I'm going to work on all my left hand. So it's just trying to sharpen a few things and really just taking care of my body. Kind of touching on the, the mental side a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. when we talked earlier, you said that, you know, you, some countries are letting people in, some countries aren't, and you yeah. have to kind of live under this cloud of you always have to be ready and you never know when that call is coming. Yeah. So how do you go about living under that kind of pressure? Do you even feel that it's pressure? How do you approach that whole situation? You know, it, it's, you know, guys in my shoes right now, it's probably the toughest times we had with, with, this, with the sport, man, not knowing. Like, you know, every, when you're in school, every year, you know, I got to be back in school in August. So you do what you got to do in the summer and, and you prepare for that. It's like we're on a whole schedule for the next – for four years of our lives, we was on a whole schedule, right, you know? So it's easy to prepare for that. It's easy to know when they relax. I can chill right now because we don't got to be back in school in a month. 
and then the right, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so it's easy to know how to prepare and how to rest. Now it's like, I can literally get a phone call through this Zoom right now from my agent and say, yo, I might need you in Spain in three days mm -hmm. or next week. So it's very hard to anticipate it, but as long as you're working out and have a routine, I think your mental should be fine. But it's hard, like, say, because you watch your peers and some might leave in August and you might not leave till November. Now it's hard, like, man, am I going to get a deal? Am I going to get a job? So now it's hard to just continue to work because you like, am I doing this for no reason? Because I've seen, like, we talked the other day on the phone, like, um, you know, I've seen a couple guys in my shoes give up. Like, even guys that played pro already, you know, I've seen them, like, you know, I can't do this. I got to give me a regular job. I got to go move on with my life because I can't just sit and wait. So, you know, to that mental side, it's tough. I'm not going to lie. Especially if, say, for instance, some of those guys have kids. You know, they have big responsibilities. They have to take care of their families, um, bills. You know what I mean? So the mental side could be really tough. But, you know, if you really want it bad, you'll continue to work on your craft and control what you can control. You know what I mean? So it's tough, but for me, I just, I know, I know I've been working hard. I know what I deserve, so I don't really worry about it too much. I just know as long as I work out, continue to work on my game, I'll be fine. Right. No, absolutely. And you, we talked, when we talked, you know, you said a lot of guys are feeling and asking themselves, is it all worth it? Kind of like you were talking yep. For it you is, personally, yeah. is it all worth it and why, why or why not? Like, for me, I feel like, there's no way I put this much work since I was, you know, yay high. Mm -hmm. Every day, you know, traveling, AAU, high school, all that pain I took in, in college, uh, trampering schools, going up high levels. Like, I did that for a reason, you know? I did that because I know what I expect out of myself. And there's no way I could let any obstacle, pandemic or no pandemic, get in the way for that. I can't let these past eight months getting away the hard work I done put for those the hard 13 years. You know what I'm saying? So that's why that's how I looked at it. I'm like, there's no way I did all that. All them accomplishments, all those ups and downs, all those failures to let the pandemic tell me I can't fulfill my dream. Now it might stop, slow it down. It might make me go another route, but I just feel like I just can't let, you know, myself down. I put in, I put way too much work. And you know how college is, man. You go through a lot. Mm. You, you know, I feel like, come on, I went through that. Something has to pan out for me. So I can't just stop now. Like, I just, I, I got a whole bunch, I got a bunch of game left in me, man. You know, I, I work way too hard for this, for me to just say, all right, I'm not getting no deals right now. I got to, I got to go somewhere else. No. It's not fair to myself. It's not fair to my trainers. It's not fair to the people that really counted on me back then. People that looked up to me now. That's you know that expected me to do big things. You know, so I can't let I can't let myself or my friends and family down. Yeah, I think there, there's a there's a great message in that for everybody, whether you're an athlete, someone in your shoes, you know, in the exact same situation, or somebody in business, somebody in school, whatever it may be. You know that that attitude of keep continuing to go and yeah, yeah, know, know yeah. the journey you've had. Yeah, so Definitely. that's great. I, I want to um, finish up with this because I, I, I saw an interview with you and I thought it was a really interesting quote. It was when you were at Arkansas and you talked about it was your grad grad year. So you had one year left. And the pretty mm -hmm. much the overarching theme of that whole conversation you had was um, this idea of wanting to go all in on this year and really, really soak all soak everything in in that year. And saying mm -hmm. this is my last year of college, college uh, basketball, I was going to say baseball, but <laughs> college basketball, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, and taking advantage of that year. How had, where, one or two questions, two part question is, is how did you arrive at that point of being able to be present in that moment? And then what has that attitude kind of taught you moving forward? Well, for one, like that mentality I had going in my senior year, I should have had it coming in mm -hmm. college, period. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we get, like, I'm just a freshman. Or I'm just a sophomore. Like, if we have that mentality as soon as we arrive on campus, who knows where our ceiling will be, mm. you know? 
Uh, so I kind of felt like, but it was my last year, you know, you want to leave out with a bang. Even though I didn't get to do that, that mentality was like, I'm in the SEC now. I, I mean, I get to play against Kentucky and the Georgias. Like, this is, you know, this is what I've been waiting for since I was a kid. Like, you know, I can't let this moment slip, mm-hmm. you know. Obviously, with a few little tweaks and injury kind of slowed it down, but I still was there. I still was present. And I still was grateful for everything through that. And I didn't get to play in March Madness, which was tough. But at least I knew I was qualified to play in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, my coaches always tell me, you know, you better take advantage of it now because these this college years go fast. Mm-hmm. I rested it one year, and it still went by fast. You know, like, looking back, it was things I could have did differently. I wish I can go back. Like, the mentality I had going into Arkansas, I wish I had that going into Florida Atlantic. Like, yo, this is my, you know, this is my freshman year. I have to come in and do this, do that. I did really well, but I could have did much better. I could have approached it. What's when you're young, you're 17, 18 years old, you don't really know that unless you have a great senior to really, you know, lead you that path. Well, my freshman year, we didn't have too much seniors, you know? So kind of we had to learn it on ourselves. But, like, that's why I tried. When I got to Arkansas, when we had freshmen, I tried to – or sophomore, I tried to tell them, like, you guys, man, walk in. Go in the gym extra now. Like, yeah. don't wait till you're junior senior to be an impact player. Be an impact player now. Like, so that way, when you get to that level, you could be higher than your ceiling was supposed to be for you. So that, that's really what it taught me going to my last year, man. We're like, man, if I had this mentality early on, who knows where I would be. But everything happens for a reason, though. Um, you know, I wouldn't train my journey for anything. I definitely learned a lot because the things I didn't do when I was there, like, it, it helped me go through different obstacles. Like, I had to go through that obstacle, you know? Like, maybe I needed to do that to learn. Mm-hmm. So, but, but that's just in life in general, man. You have to go through certain things to, so you can know better. No, absolutely. I'm a big believer in that. And, and yeah. um, you know, I, I always say, like, you know, that, that common question, oh, would you have changed anything? And you, you, yeah. you, you have to say no because you Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I like, yeah, no. Like, I'm, I'm glad how it went because everything happens for a reason. I'm a believer, I'm a believer on that, too. Yeah. You know, I, I agree. I couldn't agree more. But uh, Gene Tall, man, this was this was awesome. I appreciate it, and I really do believe that this is you know you brought a lot of value to to basketball players, other athletes, and really everybody in general who who will be able to watch this. So I appreciate your time, and um, I'm excited uh, for for your journey, and I'll be following. So so I know you. Yeah, I appreciate things. that, man. I, thank you for reaching out. You know, this is a great interview, man. So I'm definitely gonna be tuned in. You know, watching your stuff, following you throughout your process as well, man. Keep going.